Next, uh, John Lubbock. Uh, John is communications coordinator for Wikimedia here in the UK. We'll just uh, take a moment while John uh, gets to his presentation. Um, and John is responsible for promoting the work of Wikimedia, as I say, the, the foundation behind Wikipedia, um, uh, and its community, engaging institutions. Uh, John actually came here and made a short film about our exhibition. Um, and John, in 10 minutes, is going to tell us how, Wik how Wikipedia works. So uh, uh, thank you, John. Thanks, John. Um, can I start with a, just a show of hands? Um, I'd like to find out um, how many people here have uh, looked at the Wikipedia page in the past month. Excellent. And can I then ask how many people have ever edited Wikipedia? It's not too bad. I think I think the the, the statistic I heard was 0.5 percent of um, total uh, total readership uh, has actually edited. So I, I think we're doing quite well here, actually. Um, good. And by the hope, by the end of this, I hope to convince you all to become editors. So. Um, Wikipedia is used by around half a billion unique users per month. This compares to about uh, two billion for Facebook. So I think that that kind of comparison kind of gives you um, uh, an, an indication of the sort of the relative importance uh, around the world of, of how both of those uh, websites are used. Um, William Gibson, who's a, a famous um, sci-fi writer, um, famously said that um, the future is already here. It's just not very evenly distributed. Um, only 25% of people surveyed that we that our parent charity surveyed in India had heard of Wikipedia, and only 23% of people in Nigeria. The internet in general is a very Anglo-centric and Western-centric place, um, and I think that some of these structural issues about how uh, how the technology works and how we use it are really important to consider um, in terms of how how we understand how how the information gets produced. Um, and that's one of the things I hope to tell you about. Um, Samira um, said that it's important to ask who's behind a website. Um, and I think that perhaps that's one of the things that most people don't really understand about how Wikipedia works. Um, there's a general impression that uh, you know, everybody uh, can edit Wikipedia. Uh, and that kind of leaves up the question of like, you know, who on any particular article is, is doing the editing. Um, you know what are the what are the biases that those people have, and how how are those biases um, sort of ironed out by the structure of the website? Um, so I'm going to tell you a bit about how Wikipedia works. Uh, what I want to show you is that by by crowdsourcing information, we can help to show where our biases lie uh, and help us to counteract them. And I'd like to suggest that uh, rather than fake news being on trial here, it's perhaps us who are on trial. Um, the internet has obviously connected the world in. A, a, a myriad of ways that just didn't exist 20 years ago. Um, and in doing so, it's exposed us to a, a huge amount of data which, um, which we, didn't, we didn't have 50 years ago. Um, I mean, if, you know, 50 years ago, you probably you know, m were much more likely to go into the kind of occupation that your family might have done. You, you had many less uh, potential romantic or marriage partners. And so your choices were perhaps, in a way, a bit easier, I think. Um, I think one of the things that we that, that's really useful to understand is how this kind of like explosion of data um, makes us quite indecisive, um, and how it makes it very hard for us to distinguish the, the sort of the signal from the noise in all of this data. Um, I'd like to propose two ideas at the start, which um, I'd like you to to sort of hold in your mind as I talk to you about Wikipedia. Um, these are that human brains are essentially information processing machines. You can think of them as processors in a network. Um, societies uh, are ways in which these processes can be organized. Um, the second is that the way that we process information is through mental algorithms. Uh, these are heuristics or shortcuts which our, our brains use to allocate capacity to uh, an effort to dif different tasks. Um, we like to think of ourselves as rational human beings, um, you know, in the sort of humanistic world philosophy which most people kind of in the West tend to share, um, we have this, uh, we want to think of ourselves as, as rational human beings. We want to think of our, our decisions as logical. Um, but I think if you read a lot of modern scientific literature, uh, psych uh, psychological um, uh, studies, it's becoming quite clear that in many ways we're not very rational at all. Um, looking at human societies uh, in this way can help us to start uh, to understand where problems in these systems and processes lie, and that's um, and they can be applied uh, to the advantages and problems of a system like Wikipedia as well. 
uh, Wikipedia is something everybody uses, but people often don't really consider how the sausage is made. And so I'll give an overview of um, how we make this sausage, and hopefully it will allow you to understand why it works, why it's still a work in progress. And what I'd be really interested to understand, um, if you want to ask me or if you want to ask a question, is if there are any differences between how you imagine Wikipedia works and what I'm going to tell you. So uh, on January the 15th this year, uh, last week was it, like two weeks ago, um, we turned we turned 17. Wikipedia turned 17. Um, Wikipedia is just the name that we give the website, the encyclopedia. Um, it's, not, uh, it's not an agent in itself. We as the charities that promote it are uh, non-profit charities. Um, we don't write the website. Um, there are almost 300 different languages. Uh, Wikipedia exists in almost 300 different languages, um, including Latin, um, uh, w uh, old Saxon. Um, it, there used to be a Klingon version, but we sort of got rid of that because it was a bit embarrassing. Um, and uh, that, that, if you look at the stats, that gives a total of 47 million articles in all languages, 181 million different pages. So that includes all of the talk pages where people discuss what should go into the articles, everybody's user pages, etc., and a total of 72 million uh, users. Here you can see the top 28 different language Wikipedias. As you can see at the top, uh, there is English with five and a half million uh, articles. After that, you get Cebuano, which is a Philippine language, and Swedish. Um, there's maybe 20 million Cebuano speakers. The reason that Cebuano and Swedish are at the top and punching far above their weight is that there's one guy in Sweden who's married to a Filipino woman, and he has a bot that automatically generates articles in Cebuano and in Swedish. So we can slightly discount them. The next, the next biggest ones really are German, French, uh, Dutch. You know. So uh, where I where I is also a Filipino language. I assume that there's a guy who has a bot for that as well. Um, but, you know, if you look further down the list, you've got languages uh, which have tons and tons of speakers like Arabic who only have half a million pages, um, you know, whereas Catalan uh, is seven million Catalan speakers, but they're quite rich and um, they really care about their language. So they've got a really big um, Wikipedia compared to the size of the language speaking community. Um, so. Uh, and this is obviously this is shows you to, to what extent um, Wikipedia uh, follows a, a general um, a general sort of cultural and linguistic bias that you get on the internet um, at large. So this is this is not some of the problems with, with Wikipedia. I think are general problems with the internet. Um, so one of our taglines is um, the encyclopedia that anyone can edit. Um, that's not. Um, entirely, well, it is kind of true, but um, you can't edit everything. Um, you might, for example, uh, when you, when you, what you can edit without being signed into an account, but you, when you, uh, when you have a, a, uh, an account uh, with a name, you can't, uh, you, it takes, you have to have 10 edits before you can create a page, uh, and there are many protected pages. So like if you go to the Donald Trump page, uh, you won't be able to, for example, write that Donald Trump um, is an idiot there because uh, you have to, your account has to be auto-confirmed. And even then, uh, we would stop you from doing that because the page has so much vandalism that it would be, it would be completely protected for anybody apart from people who are maybe admins to change. Um, so uh, so you, you will find that it's, it's not as simple as you can edit anything. Anybody can edit, yes. Well, when I say edit uh, anybody, I also mean that 50% of the world population that has internet access, because the rest of the, the people in the world uh, don't have it at all. So that's, you know, there's, there's many layers to this. Um, so um, people think that, it, that Wikipedia is a bit of a wild west, and this is partly to do with this kind of thing. Um, you know, there's, I, when I get the Google alerts for Wikipedia, um, every day I'm confronted by somebody hacked Wikipedia because some, you know, some sports match happened and somebody got totally owned by some other guy and it's hilarious. I'm pretty sure that there's a lot of sports journalists with a lot of time on their hands doing this editing themselves in order to make up a story. Um, but the problem, I guess the problem from, uh, from our perspective is uh, when we're trying to promote Wikipedia and tell people why they should use it, uh, we're a charity with not very much money. Uh, we don't really have, uh, you know, much PR or marketing going on, which should be kind of like against our ethos in, in the first place. Um, and then you have, um, you know, lots of big news websites saying that, uh, you know, it's a, it's a wild west where anything can happen, which is not really true. Um, 
this is the location of uh, all of the charities, all of the affiliated chapters of Wikimedia. So over there in America, you have the Wikimedia Foundation, which is the charity that was set up to promote Wikipedia in 2003, I think. Um, and uh, after uh, the Wikimedia Foundation started, you had user groups in different countries who, uh, who, who formally set themselves up and started requesting funding. So we are Wikimedia UK. We are uh, an independent charity from the Wikimedia Foundation, but we receive about half of our funding from them. Um, as you can see, once again, there seems to be a little bit of a uh, bias in the ge geographical distribution of these uh, chapters. Um, there are far more user groups that don't have funding, um, but you know that again. Here, here's here's where your bias is right there. Um, so. Uh, I think one of the one of the things uh, about uh, us being a, a non-profit, a series of non-profit charities, which I think is useful, and the fact that there's no advertising on Wikipedia, is that we we're not really part of the attention economy. Um, I don't know if you've if people have heard this uh, expression, but the attention economy is uh, you know when you when you have a, a website that's for profit. Um, people want to keep you on that website so that your attention span is devoted to the advertising that's there. Um, that's you know basically uh, Facebook's entire thing is you, you, they want to keep you there so they can get more money out of you looking at the adverts. Um, by not having any advertising on Wikipedia, we don't really have to do that. Um, so it keeps us uh, you know, not very wealthy, but it also stops us from um, being sort of systemically biased by the problem of advertising. Um, so we as chapters, we don't edit Wikipedia. Um, people are always ringing us up and uh, saying, oh, there's something wrong with the caviar article. Um, and we go, that's not our job. We're, we're here to support the community of editors, and there are 120,000 regular editors on the English Wikipedia uh, alone. Um, we're, you know, we, we're not here to change the Caviar article or any other article. Um, the, uh, you know, in, in countries like Turkey, for example, where Wikipedia is currently blocked, uh, Mr. Erdogan would very much like us to remove uh, some of the articles saying that the uh, security forces had sent weapons to Islamist groups in uh, Syria, um, but we don't censor ourselves because, once again, we don't control the content on Wikipedia. So, you know, uh, the Daily Mail also doesn't like some of the stuff that we have, uh, but which is largely because uh, our editors at some point decided that they were unreliable source. Again. We didn't do that. Don't come to us uh, crying about it, please, Daily Mail, um, because uh, it wasn't our decision. It was our editors. They decided that, they, that the Daily Mail was an unreliable source. Um, so, uh, so that's another good thing. It also keeps us safe from libel. Um, you know, celebrities, uh, there's all kinds of things on celebrities' pages which they don't want there. Um, again, not our problem. So please don't ask us to change it. Um, hire somebody you know, who's a PR person. Maybe they can do it. Um, one of the main things is that we have all lots of rules and guidelines about how editors uh, update Wikipedia, and these this is essentially what keeps uh, Wikipedia um, largely reliable. That obviously there are still some problems with these guidelines. One of the main ones is um, Wikipedia is an encyclopedia. Um, you have to be notable uh, to be a person who has a, a Wikipedia page, and the way that we um, the way that we do notability is that notability is that uh, you have multiple reliable independent sources attesting to the verifiability of uh, the subject matter as being encyclopedic. Um, so uh, not everything should be on encyclopedia. Um, if you try and create an article for your cat or your mother, and um, they haven't done something important, it will get deleted. Um, we also work with lots of uh, cultural institutions um, to try to make their content open. Um, open licensing is a, is a really important thing for us um, because uh, it allows the content to be used and reused by anybody. Um, one of our central kind of philosophies is that um, you know we, we support the what we call the digital commons. Um, knowledge should be free. It shouldn't be something uh, that you have uh, that you have to pay lots of money to become educated. Uh, and you know, this a lot of the the content that's in our uh, big uh, cultural institutions, um, in our universities, should be made freely available to everybody online so that they can educate themselves. Um, once again, with only 50% of the world online, th th there's still a structural problem there. Um, but uh, you know, th it's our it's our mission to make information as as freely available and open as possible to everybody, and so that's why all of the content on Wikipedia um, and its sister image sharing site, Wikimedia Commons, is all on Creative Commons licenses, which mean that you can do whatever you want with it as long as you credit the original author. 
that also helps you to helps us to, to show where that content came from. Um, so, you know, you, your a picture, um, you know, presented to you, you can you can look at the details of that picture, and you can say who created it, where it comes from. Um, we, as well as the 120,000 editors that we have, we have uh, bots um, because there's so much content on Wikipedia that the editors couldn't do it all themselves. Um, there are bots that patrol for vandalism, um, keywords, swear words. Uh, you know, it, it, I, I come across a lot of articles where some uh, a little mischief maker in a school has gone to his school's Wikipedia page and he's inserted that um, you know Bobby is uh, the greatest uh, at sports ever or something like that. Um, that's very funny, but it will get reverted uh, after about five minutes probably. Um, <laughs> So uh, here's a, a, a vandalism bot that is on Twitter uh, that publishes, uh, yeah, publishes vandalism that's happened so that uh, if you're following this bot, you can go and see uh, who's been vandalizing what, and you can go and revert it. There's lots of other bots on Twitter which are really interesting to follow, um, MPs edits, Congress edits. Um, these bots, uh, we know the IP addresses of everybody who's editing Wikipedia, so um, the MPs edits and Congress edits, you can see all of the edits that are coming from Congress and from Parliament. Um, it is also very useful because, you know, troll farms in Russia have specific IP addresses that they're coming from. We can block entire um, IP addresses so that we don't get um, too much Kremlin propaganda. Uh, People can go and put stuff like this on articles, um, tags saying citation needed and uh, the neutrality of this article has been disputed. You're not going to get this on, um, on most television. Uh, it's, I think it's great that the BBC has, um, has a, a, a news reporting show where, where people can, can give their opinion on what, what happened on a particular show and whether, it was, um, whether they liked it or not. Um, but you can't generally do this on every single thing that happens on the BBC. You can't really live fact check uh, Nigel Farage when he comes on and says something ridiculous. Um, whereas with Wikipedia, you know, you've, you, all the references are there at the bottom of the page. You can see where the information comes from. Uh, you know, we're not asking, we, you know, we're asking you to, to do a bit of work. You know, you don't just accept it at face value. Anybody could edit it. Um, and, uh, you know, it's up to you to decide whether you think that the information on that page reflects the uh, references that are at the bottom of the page. I think what we what we kind of uh, found out as a as a um, as a result of this is that um, the, the the truth is not something that anybody particularly has. Um, I spoke to some people who are who are um, teaching refugees in Italy um, how to edit Wikipedia recently, and. I asked them what um, what things did you learn from how ref these people coming from sub-Saharan Africa had um, had interacted with the internet and what their assumptions were, and they said, um, well, they, they 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 found it difficult to get their heads around the idea that there wasn't one single authority about the truth, that um, the truth was something that you could create collaboratively, um, and actually um, a, a more verifiable, a more neutral. Um, result would come out of people um, collaborating together rather than expecting one particular institution or person to have the authority on that subject. Um, it reminds me a little bit of, there's a, there's a famous Buddhist story where um, the, the Buddha um, asks uh, ten blind men to describe an elephant and they all sort of pick a different part of it and they say, oh, it's a tail, it's a you know different part of an elephant. Um, I think what we, what we try to do is uh, is to say no, no one person has the authority in what's what's the truth, um, but you can make up your own mind by deciding what you know what everybody's input to this this truthful process is, um, and hopefully a, a better result should come out of it. Um, you know we're all subject to these kind of biases. Um, I think it's it's I'm I've been reading a, a whole book on cognitive biases recently, and I think it's um, it's really important that we we kind of start to understand what our own cognitive biases are. Um, there's a, when I studied English at university, I studied Michel Foucault, like a lot of people did, and there's, um, there's a famous uh, Foucault quote where he says uh, that the strategic adversary is fascism, the fascism in us all, in our heads, in our, in our everyday behavior, the fascism that causes us to, ha to love power, to desire the very thing that dominates and exploits us. And I think that's why I would say we're on trial rather than it being fake news, because you know, the fake news kind of interacts with, with our own uh, prejudices and our own biases, and it's kind of incumbent on us all to, to figure out what our own biases are. Um, so, there, I mean, here's an example of, uh, you know, 
there's not really fake news on, on Wikipedia, but there are instances where people create hoaxes. Um, generally, they don't create them for political purposes. Um, sometimes they create, you know, um, fake ca historical characters, just as a sort of a, an example to, to try and get away with, um, to see how long they can have a hoax on Wikipedia. But it's very difficult to systemically bias Wikipedia, essentially. Um, you still have to think critically about what you're seeing. Um, you can't just, you know, people, the, the way that our minds work, the, the essential sort of cognitive bias problem that we have is that we're all incredibly lazy. Like, we have these heuristics that, um, that, that, that jump to conclusions that, that, um, that don't ask us to think in, in a too complex a way. Um, and I hope that what Wikipedia does is to, is to get people to think about where this stuff comes from. Um, at our conference uh, last year, Jimmy Wells said, I wish the New York Times um, would uh, sometimes have a notice saying that the neutrality of this article has been disputed. Um, you should think about, you know, this, this is why media studies is a really good thing. Everybody should think about where all this stuff comes from. And what we try and do is, is to give you the tools to do this, but you still have to do some effort on your own behalf. Um, before the uh, EU referendum last uh, two, 18 months ago, we did an event with Full Fact, which is a fact-checking organization, to improve the pages on EU institutions on, uh, on Wikipedia. Um, unfortunately, the biggest spike in activity to those pages came the day after the vote when people were trying to find out what they'd voted for. So you, know, you still need to look at that stuff before you make your own mind up. Um, we still have like a really long way to go. Obviously, um, you know, I, I'm trying to kind of show you where where the where the problems still lie. Um, if you want to be, if you want to really understand how knowledge is created, you have to kind of become an active um, participant in how it's created. Um, I think we're very used to with the media just being a passive consumer of media and accepting um, the the information that's given to us. Um, what I would say is. Um, you know, get involved in editing Wikipedia. There's something that you know about. There's some subject area you're interested in that needs to be improved on Wikipedia. Um, we don't have nearly enough women editing Wikipedia. Only 17% of biographical articles are about women. We need more biographical articles about women. We need more women editing. Um, we need more content from places that are not Europe. Um, we need more ethnic minority editors um, because, you know, our goal is to to, to give people, to give every human being access to the sum of all knowledge. And it's not the sum of all knowledge if it's only 50% of the world who has internet access and it's only 0.5% of editors who, um, who are contributing to Wikipedia. So, um, you know, please get involved. And I think that um, you'll, you know, by having everybody involved in creating the sausage, um, it will be a better sausage, essentially. So, uh, thank you very much.